I, I find it really difficult to refer to Harry in the past tense, maybe because that sort of brings it home. But he's not here, physically. I think it's safe to say that what I saw on the 21st of July 2021 will will never leave me. Nobody's invincible. Um, you've got a machine um, you're riding, and that machine can be a lethal weapon sometimes. expect it to happen to you to your family um, so sudden so instant not even the chance to go and say goodbye Harry was a character in his own right, um, very independent, even from a very young age. He had this gorgeous blonde hair, beautiful green eyes, um, big smile. Uh, he was um, just very comfortable in, in, in himself and I would say, you know, he lived life on his terms. He's, he's just very comfortable in his own skin. So he was the baby, wasn't he? Yeah, he's was, he always been the baby. Um, he, he's fearless from being born. Yeah, always really it, fearless. Climbing from banisters, trees. Stairs, yeah. climbing trees. Always, he was always the injury prone one, wasn't he? He was yeah. always the one that was falling out of trees. Yeah. And he was never fussed or bothered by anything, was he? No, no. Just completely fearless. He was just a proper fear. boy, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. Wanting yeah. to be outside playing. Yeah. Very loving. Uh, tended to keep himself to himself, like doing his own thing. Wouldn't be told anything by anyone. Loved the outdoors, like, as we was younger. And as we got older, we both got into, like, our PlayStation stuff like that. As we got older, yeah, yeah, we had a really good relationship. He was always exploring, like whether it's like looking for lizards or looking for frogs or yeah. climbing something. Not so, a free spirit, wasn't it? Yeah, you had to watch him constantly. He, he, he was just, a, just a beautiful soul and and kind, loving, thoughtful. Yeah. Missing. Terribly. He felt that he was a capable rider and no, he, he, he was I'm not saying fearless, but but didn't I think he just thought that that wouldn't happen to him. You know. He'd been, he'd have been riding for nearly three years when he, when he was killed, yeah. Harry, Harry was paying for that bike on his own. Mm. Um, you know, that was his pride and joy. He absolutely loved that bike. He was paying it off himself. Um, and he was fearless. You know, I can't say I ever saw him like sort of ragging it around the streets. But we all, everyone would say, "Oh, be careful, Has. You know, if he was, if he was off out somewhere, because we know he's fearless and the... he likes fast things as well. He likes like fast cars, fast yeah. bikes. That's what he was interested in. I think that the love for motorbikes came from his granddad. Um, you know, they'd often go out on the back of his granddad's bike, um, it, and it wasn't just riding. You know, he he loved messing about in the garage. 
with the sort of mechanics of it and, and that ultimately is what he wanted to do um, for a job. Get his acting into it, he loved it. Uh, all he used to talk about was bikes, fast cars, stuff like that, it was, that was him. He loved it, he had no fear, not a single shred of it. It was what Harry loved, he always had his helmet on. Um, you could always say be careful, yeah. obviously, but you, you don't ever think the worst do you, but you, you, you've got to say be careful because yeah. you know that we were more probably concerned about him having an accident maybe yeah. and hurting himself, but not, you know, not anything as serious as what happened. Even though I have my own fears, for me, it was important that those fears of mine didn't stop him doing something that he was dreaming of or loved. Um, and I, I don't know now whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but, you know, when I think that in his short life, of 19 years and I've got to be glad that he did do something that he loved and that he realised one of his dreams which was owning his own motorbike. Harry had left home that morning as he would normally do on his way to work ridden his bike which was his pride and joy but he'd taken a route which was not long three to four miles from the home address to his place of work um, during that journey he uh, made a couple of maneuvers that witnesses saw uh, one witness told us that they thought he'd, he'd drop the bike his bike would go down at one stage as he weaved between two cars and another witness described a, an overtake which was optimistic uh, and then a short time later both of these witnesses arrive along the same piece of road and find that there's been a collision. That collision involved a combined harvester and Harry's bike and sadly uh, Harry passed away due to the injuries sustained in that collision. Um, so I immediately sort of got on the phone and, and texted him and said, hi Haz, are you, are you up? Are you, you know, you should be in work. This was about quarter past one. So I know now that when I sent that text that Harry, Harry was dead. Um, I almost... Didn't, I didn't want to exist after that happened. Losing Harry has been the most traumatic experience of my life. That pain that you feel is so raw. Just um, it's almost like um, you don't want to accept it. It's like it's not real. It's not happened. Um, and. Now, I still sometimes think he's just going to walk out of his room or fly in through the carriage. And, uh, it, it's something that's really difficult to um, accept that's happened. Very. Um, <sighs> It's that pain that, that it, it doesn't go away. It, it, it will be there all the time. And although it's not that raw pain that was there initially, it's still pain 
you, you just just make more room for it and learn to live alongside it. Yeah. Yeah, it was just something that you never ever forget. No, never ever never move on from. Never It's traumatizing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's um you don't you don't expect it to happen to you, to your family. Um so sudden, so instant, not even a chance to go and say goodbye. Um you know, may, maybe that was for the best, I don't know. Um but no it's it's two years on. And you can still replay that 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 full day I do anyway. Yeah. Over and over and over again. Sometimes you sit there and think, I still can't believe that that's happened to our family, that our family are going through this, that he was taken away at nineteen so suddenly. And no chance for anyone to to say goodbye, to have that final hug or to see him ever again. It was torture because I was home alone. My mum and dad were in Anglesey and as you know, like police wouldn't tell me anything, like anything at all. I thought someone was in trouble at first and then I had my mum and dad's office ringing me saying where's how he's not turned in and I knew he left an hour and a half ago. It takes about 20 minutes to get there. I knew something was wrong straight away. I drove up to the crash seat trying to wrestle with police officers to get past him, to get to him. Well, I didn't get to him. They probably did me a favour to be honest, but I don't, yeah, I was in a bad way on the day. Didn't know what to do with myself. Got in the car, Andrew, um, I think he tried to ring Harry as well, it just went straight to voicemail. So at that point, um, I rang Tom and asked, uh, asked Tom if Haz had left work. He said, oh yeah, he left ages ago, why? So I said, well, he's, not, he's not in work. I think Tom had been the last person to actually speak to Harry you know, before he died. And that, that's, I think that's been difficult for Tom. I want to be the same person again look at life like in a different way and I'll never be the same again. For that period of time between talking to Tom and knowing that the police had been outside and were asking questions about our car, then taking into account that Harry hadn't turned up for work I was ringing work to find out whether his bike was parked where it should be. Um, I then started to look on my phone um, to see if there'd been any um, news about an accident. Um, and I saw that Alder Lane had been closed and um, because of a serious incident there was no other information other than that. I, ju I just knew then that because nobody had rank, the fact that the road was closed, Harry hadn't turned into work, it just all, all said that, that Harry had been in that incident and, and likely wasn't alive. I'd been sat in work thinking everything's yeah, we were a normal exactly. day. It was just a normal day. It was just, it was just a normal, normal day, day not, not knowing that your parents were driving home. Having so the worst journey of their lives, yeah. panicking. But they didn't even know what was going on at that point. They just knew something awful had happened. Yeah. They'd been told they're, to searching the, they're searching the news all the time. They were checking the traffic all the time. They knew that Harry hadn't turned into work. It was obviously awful for them because we knew what had happened. But there's no one, to, no one would confirm it until they, they got home. So that's what made it all, but we knew, but we didn't, do you know what I mean? So it was torture, to be honest.
you put you always put yourself in their position. Um, you know, you walk up to the address, you've got uh, what you can see it's a family home. Um, you know, police officers are, are human too. We have feelings and we have our own families. Um, and you put yourself in their shoes slightly thinking, this is a family home. You know, police officers have children and, and wives, partners, and mothers, fathers. Um, and you always think, I wouldn't want to hear this news. So delivering that good news is you just take a deep, deep breath um, and, and, and try and say it correctly and do it the best way you can at the time. As a person, you reflect on that as a who's got family. I think, well, I just wouldn't want to be in their shoes right now. Um, trying to deliver that message in the right way. Because there's no second chance of delivering that message and, and deliver to the family the best way. Um, Bev was starting to ask more questions. Uh, how, where, what, when. Um, some of those are things I can answer, but some parts I, I don't know exactly where Harry was going. Um, with the information we got, he was due to go to work. Um, so we make a little bit of assumption he was on the route to work, so we make an assumption he was going to work. We can't confirm that at that stage because the person who knows that is Harry. Unfortunately, he's no longer here to, to tell us what were and what he was doing at that, that, that precise moment. Um, we get lots of people telling us little bits of information. We're trying to form pictures of everything that's come together. And overall, it, it's devastating delivering it. And you, you feel some of their feelings and uh, empathise with their position. It's, it's quite emotional sometimes delivering that message. Harry's he's died in a, in a traffic collision. I think that nothing can prepare you for a death like that. You know. not, you know, unpredicted, unnatural. Um, there's something profoundly wrong about a child dying before you. I think you have a responsibility to take care of your, your own life, but also a responsibility to make sure that you come home to your mum and dad, the people that love you. Because, and it, it's not just that, it's not just that family unit, the impact that it has on so many people it's it's your family your friends even even strangers it, it, it affects everyone a whole community it's like a huge ripple effect you, you just can't realize how how big a, a death like that impacts people so yeah just take care of yourself and do everything that you can to keep safe and come home it's just absolutely heartbreaking it's awful horrific to watch the whole family crumbling around because mm -hmm. the baby of the family has just been taken so in, a, in a split second gone that's what life does have you thought he was invincible um, well, I thought never, nothing, would, nothing like this would ever happen to him. Yeah. Um, and it does. Yeah. You're not invincible. And, yeah, you lose someone over it, but then it has a huge impact on the whole family and friends. And that impact then... It's for the rest of your life. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't ever go away. It never goes away. And I know that if Harry could get a message over now or and know that he would be devastated at, at what it's what this has done to to to, to his family. To his family and all his friends. Yeah. It was a split second and he didn't stand a chance. I think it 
I think the police said he was doing 24 miles an hour. He didn't stand a chance. The bike had barely a scratch on it. The bike was completely, it was nearly untouched, wasn't it? Yeah, he'd just finished paying it off. So he'd just finished paying his, his, his pride and joy off. Um, and yeah, I don't think there was an awful lot wrong with it. Harry, on the other hand, it was a split second and he was gone. And, and that's what we all have to live with daily. And that's, that's what I want to get across to young riders. Okay, it's fun and, you know, you, you think you've got the rest of your lives ahead of you. But no one's invincible. And it happens every single day. You don't have the protection that you would do in a car. And it's your families that are left to pick up the pieces. Yeah, when they're gone, they're gone, but we're all still here and we're all heartbroken and we're all still missing Harry and we've not got him here. And it's the people that you leave behind, isn't it, sometimes? Yeah, it's sad. It is, it's sad. And we had no opportunity to say goodbye, to even see him. That was all taken away. Mm, it is, it's sad. I think it's safe to say that what I saw on the 21st of July 2021 will, will never leave me. The scene of a fatal collision is, is really unusual. Um, you are on a piece of road which is normally alive. You can't stand on a piece of live road normally. And when you are at a fatal collision, everything has stopped. That scene is locked down and it's still. You're stood where you shouldn't normally be stood and you see everything where it's been left and it's a snapshot of something that's happened before you got there. It's eerie. Um, all the vehicles in situ, each one telling their own little bit of the tale about what's happened and then sadly in the centre of the scene we have Harry who suffered some, some massive and very extensive injuries and something that I can't really put into words what I saw as I walked up to that scene. <clears throat> there were other witnesses and other drivers in, involved in this collision that Harry had never met and yet they will be permanently touched by Harry and his presence. I know that Bev has found a, a great deal of solace in working with other people that have been bereaved in road traffic collisions and that's why we're here today and her strength of character in, in what we're doing with the Think Bike is, is down to, to her bravery. Um, not every family can do it. Not every, not every collision tells the story that Harry's does. Uh, and so it's been a privilege to spend time with, with Bev and see how she has had the strength to deal with, with this. That was really difficult, seeing Harry's bike for the first time. You know, you, you can't imagine, really. Um, I know you can see the emotion on my face now and the emotional pain that you have, but there's a physical pain and, and physical, um, you know, the way your body reacts. I saw that bike, I just could not stop shaking. Um, it's something that I'm really proud of in terms of, not for what I've done, but for what's what it's doing as an educational tool. And for me, if it can stop another young man or young woman dying on the road like that, then if it's just one, it will have done its job for me. Yeah, so that's why I'm proud of it. Not for anything that I've done, but for what it will do and, and possibly can do. Right over here. It's, it's, it's the best thing she can do. I mean, say, it either makes or breaks she doesn't it? And she's trying to do productive things, positive things, and uh, help other people with it. I mean, there's not much she can say, really, is there? It's, especially if it's not someone that knows she means. People just don't listen to you and not bothered. 
Still, it's clap happens to someone like close to home. No wonder that you're not bothered until it does. That's, you know, it's not nice, but it's the truth. Younger people, they don't really think about the consequences, do they? They just go and do things and until you get older or you don't realise the dangers and stuff like that. Or you just bypass them. It's down to them, isn't it? To take it on board as well. I mean, it's not fully. I mean, think back to being around a lot longer than my mum has been using it and stuff still happens. I mean, everyone's life matters, doesn't it? But there's no need to make it a lot shorter. You need to, if you are going to be using a motorcycle or on the road, you need to take extra precautions and be careful. Make sure the road conditions are right, all that type of stuff. I'm sure Harry, if I ever met him, would not want his parents or his mother far to go through what they've had to endure. You might not worry about yourself, but other people do worry about you. And what happens to you will affect others as well. What I want you to do on the road is to think about the consequences of your riding, of your driving, and be safe for everyone, not just yourself. Think about the people that you leave behind, friends, family, and how they have to deal with what I can knock on the door and tell them that you're no longer here. How does it affect them? How does it change their lives? Because their lives also matter. I'm hoping that by sharing our story and the impact that it's had on our family, it will just give them something to think about, to live. To know that, you know, when, when you get in a car or on a bike, you, as well as having a responsibility for your own safety, you also have a responsibility to make sure that you come home back to the people that love you.